I don't know. We're going to have to do something for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. oh, yeah, I can do that. Watch <laughs> this. I know. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I know. Oh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can do that. Watch Come this. <laughs> can everybody float around for us? That was really cool, Chris. Can everybody float around? <laughs>
This holographic gauntlet is the weapon that Dan will be using while playing Project X-Ray. You'll notice that as he moves his arm, the hologram moves as well. This is a wearable hologram. And when you combine technology like this with the environment understanding of HoloLens, you can do some pretty spectacular things. And can even use his shield to defend himself. Nicely done. Looks like that's all of them. In 2012, NASA got tired of faking weightlessness by using the zero-g plane, better known as the Vomit Comet. So in 2012, they started soliciting companies that specialize in real-time augmented virtual reality so that they can fake weightlessness and floating objects in the air in real time. Uh, simply the cost of the plane and the safety concerns and the fact that they weren't very good at it. They didn't go to Hollywood, which most of Hollywood's effects are post-processing. That's after the video is made. They needed something they can do in real time and make it look realistic. And so I'll put this link in the description. They found a company called Telemetrics. Thank you, Debbie Durant, for uh, bringing this to my attention. After I researched this, lo and behold, I found out uh, our government has a contract with these people. And Telemetrics, Basically, what they do is they help news teams and they bring um, broadcasts together in real time and they're able to create sets, cities, anything you want in a virtual reality world and make it look absolutely 100% real. They're also able to bring different people from around the world, put them in the same room and broadcast live, uh, give them desks, whatever they need to make the broadcast. So it's a pretty amazing company. Um, here we see Johnson Space Center Telemetrics provided latest camera robotics technology at NASA's government television at Mission Control. Why do you need to fake virtual reality sets at Mission Control and Johnson Space Center? I think we know the answer to that when we saw Tim Peake on the gridded blue screen. So this next segment, I'm going to show you what it looks like when virtual reality being broadcast live doesn't work out so well because the system's not perfect. And then at the very end, I'm going to show you the mother of all screw ups when they actually uh, have a channel shut off that should be on. Because once again, these astronauts are looking in 3D space. They are grabbing objects because they're wearing argumented contact lenses. And if that object's not there broadcast to the viewers live, then it's going to look pretty ridiculous. I tried to pick some clips that were obvious and some not so obvious. Uh, show you some of the contacts. We're going to see um, Tim Peake with his contacts in, but these are virtual reality contacts overlaid on the eyes so actors can interact with things in 3D space all in real time. Okay, I have a lot of Tim Peake screw ups, but this one here, the system glitches, the software does not track his hand properly, and Tim slips his hand underneath his other fingers, which is tightly holding onto the mic, which would be impossible. Um, I don't think this is Tim's fault. Normally, Tim always moves his other fingers up while he slides his hand under. I just think the uh, system didn't respond to his movements here. We all know NASA uses wires, and sometimes we'll catch them like this here, the guy pulled on his wire. However, some days when you're filming live, things just don't work out, and it becomes so blatantly obvious, it's ridiculous. So, in this clip, there talking, live feed, and what you know, we have a astronaut go by us in the background, uh, obviously trying to give it a more realistic, spacey, station, busy effect. The only problem is the camera that was supposed to mask this harness out, or the uh, video feed, is not working. And so we see the guy come flying along in a harness on his wires. Pretty amazing. But that's not all that goes wrong here. Okay, so you see to the right this guy's flipping this hat. This hat's actually on another video um, channel in 3D space. It's virtual reality. He's They're wearing augmented uh, contact lenses so that they can interact with these 3D objects. Now in this scene, the guy on the left in the green shirt, he thinks he sees an object in 3D space that's being broadcast to him. 
So he grabs it and he puts it off to the side. He's looking straight ahead because he's looking at an object rotating in front of him, but the video channel is down that is supposed to show the viewers what we're supposed to see, and so we don't actually get to see the object that he has seen. And I would just sum this up as a very terrible, bad, horrible day for NASA doing live feeds. Here's the thing. Uh, as much fun as this was, there is a time coming when you and I will not be able to tell the difference. And space has not changed. Uh, technology to fake space has gotten better. Just because Adobe gets a massive update to Photoshop or After Effects or there's a massive update at telemetrics and their virtual reality, augmented virtual reality programming, that does not advance us magically 20 years in space. It's way better than I imagined. It is actually really hard to describe. Um, I mean, just the, the whole ride into space on the Soyuz rocket. What a phenomenal machine. So powerful, such a smooth launch. And then arrival on board the International Space Station and adapting to this weightless environment and being able to go to the cupola and look at that amazing view of planet Earth. It's, it's way beyond my expectations. Uh, I definitely haven't mastered it. I'll give you a trial and I'll show you just how bad it is. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another week. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me another week. Living and working in microgravity takes its toll on the body. During his time in orbit, Paolo's spine has grown longer and his bones and muscles have weakened. Paolo's spine has grown longer and his bones and muscles have weakened. He was playing with the water, with the, with the, with the paddles, the, the uh, hydro repellent paddles. So he was bouncing the, the glob of water between the two paddles. And one of the, one of the community noticed that his eyes were not following the frickin' water. They were, uh, they were jumping into places that he, he had it for a little bit. And then after that, his eyes were completely out of sync with the, with the water droplet. But when those guys were playing ping pong back and forth with the water, you'll notice that the girl always is looking above the camera. And the reason why is because they're looking at the, the CGI feed. You know, they need to see where the item is that they're playing ping pong with because it's not right in front of them. So once I saw Helmick's video, I really, um, it opened my eyes even more to, oh, okay, because every time I've watched those astronauts, they appear to be watching a monitor above the camera, which, okay, I could see doing that. But on the other hand, if you're just up in space giving an interview or playing ping pong or whatever you're doing, then you would have no reason to look at a monitor. It doesn't matter. The camera's on you. You know that. So it doesn't matter what you look like, you shouldn't care about that, but they're always very concerned with that monitor. Well, that tells me why. It's when they're using uh, props. 